Good evening and a beautiful evening. Yeah, it's a little cool, but very little breeze. So I had a really nice bike ride. Oh yes, there's my bike. Don't steal it. Got my eyes on it, right? <laughs> Years ago, I think I've told the story probably a few times, but some of them, they just stick out in Car Carberry. Yeah, the old cafe, the old country style cafe big grandfather clock on the wall moving sign underneath don't you dare try to steal it because the staff watches it all the time so hey this is uh look at that look at that sun you know it never matters no matter whether we have more restrictions or less the creator behind the universe. He can hold the world in the palm of his hand. Created the sun. He created the moon, the stars, the open spaces, the sky. Put it on an axis that works perfectly all the time. And you know what? You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. If you think that bangs and explosions and all those kinds of things would have created the earth, well, I got a brick house to sell you out in the sand in the ocean. And it's uh, pretty deep, the ocean, and the br brick house is pretty small. So, uh, yes, it's uh, interesting times we're at right you know as an individual living by myself yeah i get to get one visitor for the next four weeks except tomorrow tomorrow it's still a little more open but after that it's one designated visitor does that mean one designated visitor per day <laughs> or for that whole period well you know what it's uh to some people it's a uh, it's an absolute must that uh, everything gets shut down and everything looks uh, uh, like uh, we're, we're fighting COVID. And then there's those other ones that are on the other side saying it's all hogwash. And, uh, and then there's some of us in the middle that look at it from both sides. And, and yes, we've seen, yeah, the records may not always indicate exactly, but people have gotten sick and died from COVID-19. And uh, so that's not my message. My message is that, as I said right at the outset, the sun continues to set in the west. Tomorrow morning, the sun will rise in the east. And that's a good thing. Yes, there are farmers that are out there planting, seeding, pre preparing. Well, there's not as much uh, uh, land preparation as there used to be uh, because, uh, you know, hey, they, they're doing minimum till, zero till, and, and if something uh, doesn't work out the first time around, they can drill it right back in the same spot. And if you get some of the volunteer coming up or the earlier seeded coming up, doesn't matter. You got the same crop, and if uh, you get the rain and the sunshine, then uh, things are happening. Yes, I've had a chance to keep in touch with Jim Palliser, who seeded on March the 21st, the first time. That's 10 days earlier than he'd ever planted before. And, uh, yeah, he uh, told me on the weekend that uh, it had germinated, but not popped out of the ground. So when it did hit minus 8, as he told me, I learned this in grade 11 physics, the soil unless it's frozen, really doesn't get to be low zero very, very often. And with that germinated wheat, he said, should be in good shape. Well, the proof will be in the pudding, and I respect Jim's uh, analysis. I, expect, I respect his farming techniques and practices, and I'm sure that uh, if there's a way to do it, he'll do it. Does it always come out exactly the way we wanted it? No. But then, hey, things wouldn't be normal. So plant, 
It's a hashtag plant 21 is underway. Not every part, but I, uh, I did an article uh, with a survey on uh, Twitter with a, quite a few farmers that follow me and to get an idea of where the uh, moisture was at, to get an idea of uh, what's going on in different fields. And, and now the next one I need to do is what are farmers planting? Again, it doesn't change much. I mean, it, when canola hits 20 bucks a bushel, you know, it, it's hard to resist, but at the same time, there's also rotations to keep in mind. Some people will cheat and probably get away with it. Others will cheat and not get away with it. But at the same time, the rotations for most good farmers continue to be in place. Sure, they have a few swing acres that they can do some other things with. It's like uh, uh, Jim Pallister told me. He said, uh, yeah, we are taken a break of, for canola for a year. Well, now he's going to plant some canola, but not that much. He still put in, I believe, 3,800 acres of wheat, and, and I'm not sure how much canola. And then he goes with the pulses, the kidneys, and the pinto beans. And then I uh, want to just uh, tell the, another short story here with uh, Frank Reimer, Border International Bean Company. It's that big new building with lots of bins just north of Bungie in Altona. I'm going tomorrow to have my official tour. Yes, I've been there several times. And uh, state of the art, edible bean processing company by uh, Frank Reimer and a farmer from the uh, Walhalla area south of the border, Jim Eakin. And so, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be something to behold. I'm looking forward to the tour because he got the word Friday that he could officially turn on the plant. And uh, they've been testing and trying things, and I think even a few truckloads have gone to Mexico, and railroad cars are getting filled. And so it's going to be really interesting to see. So that's where I'm going to be tomorrow to getting a tour from Frank of the company that he built in the last year. Yes, right during COVID, isn't that something? And uh, I'm not quite sure when he originally started. I imagine it was somewhere there in 2019, maybe. But maybe not, maybe the spring of 2020. No, it was too, we'll find out tomorrow. So that's uh, another good news story for edible bean growers here in the Red River Valley. Yeah, not everybody can grow peas, and we've got a number of huge pea processing plants, one in Portage La Prairie, Roquettes. So uh, it's going to be keenly watchable what is going to happen. And then we have, uh, you know, the hog industry, we have the cattle industry, and, of course, we got the grain and wheat, barley, oats, corn, Sunflowers, canola, I'm sure I missed a few. I remember years ago when I hosted a number of farmers, three busloads from the United States and toured them around southern Manitoba. I thought that sometimes with seeded, uh, with grain seed that my father grew, and if he had three different uh, kinds of seed, wheat, barley, and oats, and maybe have three different varieties right in there. You had foundation, you had commercial, and you had uh, one other one, I believe. So, and then the other crops, sometimes I think we're up to 20 crops. Now, of course, if you're growing three, that's uh, pretty big. And uh, that's what my brother and his son do on the farm, Jack and John. I believe they, they're into wheat, uh, canola, and uh, soybeans. So soybeans is still there. It's probably going to lag a little bit this year. Uh, soybeans, uh, uh, you know, we're going to have to wait and see in that one as well. So farmers are in that sometimes no man's land for some. Some simply don't like to go out when the temperatures don't come up. The next person says, I'm going, depending, of course, on how much land you have to cover. So that's, uh, that's it from the agricultural standpoint. I uh, just uh, wanted to say one more time that, you know what, God is good, 
God is great. Let us thank him for whatever we have and give him praise and honor and glory. Thank you for those that have, are watching. And uh, so take care. Have yourself a great night. My battery is running low and I uh, need to get on with my bicycle trek. Somewhere, sometime, somehow, I'll see you again. And that's Siemens Says.